the van stall. It's time to talk about the van stall. The stall. The van stall. What's up guys, Jasper Kutu. Today, we're talking the van stall. Is it worth it? Do you need one? Is it the best reel ever? All this coming up. First of all, you might be asking yourself, did he up his production value? And yes, I did. Thank you for noticing. Anyway, so today we're talking about the Van Stahl. This is the Van Stahl VSX series. And I have a 250. And then we have the Van Stahl VR. This is the VR50 series. There's a couple of different things. The first thing that you will notice, besides the fact that they are sexy as F, is the price point. This reel is over $800. It's like $839, I believe. So after tax, you're probably looking at a $900 reel. And this reel is like 500, five and 550, somewhere around there. So you're probably looking at close to 600 bucks, all said and done for this little tiny thing. Uh, they're expensive. Most people that get into fishing or surf casting, do you need an $800 reel? The answer and the quick answer is no, absolutely not. You do not. I recommend people to start with the Daiwa BG series because it is cheap. It is super cheap. It's got a bunch of drag. It's a great reliable reel. People will probably argue that it's not a great reel. I think for the price point, if you were just getting into surf casting or just getting into fishing and you wanted a good spinning reel, it's like 120 bucks gets you like an 8,000 series or something like that. Don't quote me, but it's, it's cheap, you know, it's like 150 bucks, let's say, gets you into a good quality reel. And I use them, I have a small one for albie fishing and I have a big one for striper fishing. Someone that doesn't really know what they're doing, give them a BG, let them go to town. If they break it, whatever. These are a whole nother ball game. So, the number one thing with a van stall, the number one thing is that it is 100% sealed. Now. Other companies will claim we have a fully sealed reel. Sure. This, on the other hand, is when I say it's 100% sealed, I mean it is 100% sealed. You could dunk it in magma and it's not getting in. Like it is 100% sealed. I've heard stories of them dropping these overboard and not finding them for months and then like somebody on like a dive trip or something will find one and then still be able to fish it like the same day. Like they are 100% sealed. So why would you need a 100% sealed? If you're doing any kind of typical surf casting, it's not make or break. If you're on the rocks or you're on the jetty, you don't need a 100% sealed reel, which is why I'm saying you can go with a Dio BG and be totally fine forever uh, or for a while. This really comes into play when you get into some crazy surfing. So if you are skishing, where you are swimming with your reel, if you are uh, wading out to a rock, if you're in chest high water, you can fish this virtually underwater, completely underwater, and you do not have to worry about salt and water getting inside of the reel and corroding it out. These things are like tanks, they are bulletproof. They also have some of the highest drag capacities for a spinning reel that's out there. I want to say this has like 42 pounds of drag, I believe, or 44 pounds of drag on the VS250. You're, you're stopping anything. Uh, you can stop a freight train with it at the end of the day. They will tuna fish with these reels. So these will they will giant bluefin tuna fish for, with a VS250. 275 is probably more so for giant bluefins, but you could catch and land a giant bluefin tuna on this and it has enough drag to stop the fish and turn them. They are tanks. No questions asked tanks. The second, if I put number one is that they're 100% sealed, the second giant feature with a van stall reel is that it is 100% aluminum. It, it's all made out of one block of aluminum. It's made out of like an aircraft grade, super industrial. I have no idea. You should contact 
If, if you ever go to a saltwater show, uh, you talk to Craig. He is the originator and the starter of Vanstall. He's still with the company. I think, I believe that since then they've sold the pure fishing, but I think he still has a lot to do with it. Uh, he is a wealth of knowledge, mainly because he started the company, but he is also super nice. He'll sit there and, and answer any questions. He'll tell you it's some crazy aircraft grade aluminum and it's all one block and that is how they machine this out. I could throw this down a flight of stairs and then put it through a wood chipper and I can still fish it tomorrow. They are bulletproof. I mean, I literally view my fishing reels as tools. They are not showpieces to me. If they're a showpiece to you and you don't want to scratch it, God bless you. But to me, I want to beat the living hell out of my gear and know without a shred of a doubt that it is going to perform flawlessly as soon as I pick it up. That's a big, big feature to me personally. It doesn't have to be a feature to you, but to me, I want to be able to beat the living hell out of it and still keep fishing it. Why? Because stuff happens. You catch a big fish in the rocks and he's going crazy and you're trying to land that trophy fish. I want to be able to chuck my rod in the rocks, not care about it, land the fish safely, release him safely, pick up my rod and reel, not even have to look at it and keep on fishing. I want it to be able to be bulletproof and to be used as a tool. I view this no differently than a hammer. I am going to beat the living hell out of a hammer. I'm not gonna care about what the handle looks like or what the head looks like or what the teeth, I'm going, I, it has a job. It's to drive a nail in every single time and I don't have to inspect it when I pull it out of my, my, my work belt. That is what I view my reels as. Some people do not. The person that I bought this reel from, this I bought used, the person I bought this from, he was selling it for like, I don't know, $200 cheaper, quick story, $200 cheaper. And he, I asked him, why were you selling it? You know, I know there's not gonna be a problem with it, but I was like, why are you selling it? He's like, I didn't wanna scratch it. At that point, what I did, and this is no word of a lie. If you're out there, please comment below if you see this and let me know that you were the one I bought it from. But no word of a lie, I bought it from him, I paid my cash, I looked at him, I took it out of the box, I said thank you, and as I was walking out, I scratched it against the ground. Scratched it right across the ground, right in front of him. I wasn't doing that to be a jerk, at all it was more so just like dude i do not care about scratching it it is gonna get scratched the sexiest fan stall i've ever seen almost had all the black completely taken off of it that to me is just like damn that thing has been through battle this thing dude, i'm telling you could throw it through a wood chipper and i think it's coming out the other side and you can still fish it don't do that but like that's how i feel about the van stall it is that legit so, do you need one? No. Are they awesome? Absolutely. Uh, this I will have forever. I will pass it down to my kids, my grandkids. That this will this will last forever. They are a phenomenal reel. Now, there's a couple differences and a couple of evolutions. This is the VS series versus the VR series. I'm going to talk about the VR in just a second. But the VS series had an original series and now they have the X series. Basically, long story short, the X series has an oscillating, hope I'm saying that right. It has a, the line lay. When it goes up and down, it's laying the line perfectly flat. The original series, I believe that there was some comments and some complaints about the fact that the line lay, so how it would actually lay the line on the spool would be uneven. Vanstall went back, fixed that, corrected it. Now they have their X series. That's no longer a problem. So I would recommend the X series. Um, some people like just the original series and that's totally cool. This is an X series and you know that because it says X series. Uh, this is the 250. I don't really want to get too much into sizes with these. You go with whatever you want. Um, I just like the 250 because I could fish it for tuna and I can fish it for large striped bass in the canal. Um, this is my workhorse. Absolute beast. Third thing that you will notice with this. So there is no bail. 
major benefit in my opinion when it comes to these it takes a couple of trips out to get used to if you've never fished a bayless reel before you have to get used to it it's not something you're going to pick up and just boom have it right off the bat it does take some getting used to but when that line's coming off all i basically have to do is touch the line and the pickup the bale will pick it up for, for me so I don't have to flip the bale I don't have to take any time flipping the bale long story short to give you like the easiest way that I think about it is when my lure gets casted out the second that it hits the water I can immediately tap my line and have it engaged so that now I can immediately start action the second the lure hits the water I can start action that's the major benefit that I view it. I don't have to flip it. I don't have to like have that half second of like cranking it where sometimes it auto engages. I don't have to engage it manually. All I have to do is just be reeling and just tap my finger on the line. It picks it up and I can already start working the lure. So if you're working a pencil popper, the second that it touches the top, boom, I can already be working the lure the second that it hits it. I think that's a third major, major benefit of this reel. They're awesome. They're amazing. They're fully sealed. They're 100% aluminum. They are tough as nails and they're bailless. They are phenomenal reels for some fishing applications, not all fishing applications. There is one drawback with the Van Stahl that I have to talk about they are slow so what i mean by slow is this has a 33 i believe it's 33 this is a 36.5 or a 37 retrieve rate so what i mean by that is it's 37 inches let's say comes back on the reel for every one rotation so every time I rotate the reel, 37 inches come back. So when people say it's a slow or a fast reel, that's really what they're talking about. So they're talking about how quickly can I get that lure back to me as I'm reeling. This reel is relatively slow when you're talking about doing that. So there's a couple applications that I would never recommend this reel for. I would say 90% of the time, this reel's phenomenal for just about everything. But if you're trying to burn a lure back, it's a little bit slow. Jigging. Jigging the canal is something a lot of guys like to do. This is a terrible reel to jig the canal. I don't care. It's a terrible reel to do it. Because you can't get the lure in the current jigging and and retrieve enough. You'd be You're going to be cranking so much... I mean, you could do it. I'm not saying you can't do it. Guys will probably argue that they do it all the time. I'm not saying you can't. You're just going to get yourself absolutely burned out. That's where the Shimano Stella and other reels like that with higher retrieve rates are worth their money. So I think the Stella has like 52, 52 or 50. It's in the 50s. So it's all 50 inches. Let's say 52 inches, something like that. Every time I bring it in, it's it's taking it 50 inches of line that's a fast reel without a doubt if you are working tuna and you're doing surface and you're trying to burn the lure back in that's a fast reel but anything you're trying to like work slow which the majority of fishing that i do is very slow very slow if you're working a darter if you're working a pencil popper if you're working a magic swimmer if you're working a needlefish all of these things I fish a darter. I mean, I, I, I'm fishing it ridiculously slow. So for that reason, I don't need to burn the reel in. I don't need an 11. I don't need 50 inches of retrieve rate. I don't need a fast reel. So for those applications, it's great. If I'm going to jig the canal, this is not the reel I want to use. Absolutely not. That's the one disadvantage that this reel has. So I would say it's like nine out of 10, but that one is just it's application based. So it's great for just about everything else. The number one reason why I do it is because it can be used as a tool. I can beat the living hell out of it and I don't have to worry about it. But if that one particular day I'm jigging the canal, yeah, I'm just gonna use a different reel. It's not a big deal. 
but this is something that at the end of the day, I think that if you evolve in your saltwater fishing, this is a reel that is well worth the money. Do I think it's worth the money? Yes, I think it is well worth the money. This is a reel that is just bulletproof. Now, this is the that's the VS series. The VR series is relatively newer. Uh, I wanna say it probably came out like four or five years ago, five, six years ago, they started coming out with the VR series. Basically, it is, what it has been marketed to me as is it is the exact same reel. Don't quote me on all this stuff, but it is basically the exact same reel as the VS, just lighter. It's slimmer, it's lighter, it's a lighter aluminum. They've cut more out of it. You can see the bail system is different. They've cut more and machined more out of it. It's a lighter reel. Still 100% sealed, still bulletproof, still a little slow, but it is a lighter reel. So there are some applications that I don't want a heavy reel. I think the rigidity of a head of this reel, if you're fighting big, big, big striped bass, and then you throw the currents of the canal into the mix, the rigidity that you get from this is worth it. It's got a, I believe it has a titanium spool. So the rigidity of this reel is like none other. So when you are doubled over on a giant bluefin tuna on spinning gear, this reel is not gonna bend or torque at all. Like at all. So when that rod is full, if you're fishing a parabolic rod and it is really, you got 40 pounds of drag hooked into that fish, this reel is not moving. It is so rigid, it's unbelievable. I'm not saying that this reel isn't rigid, it's just lighter. Um, you probably fight on the bigger ones, like a 175, a 200. I think they come in a 200 and up. You can still fight just about anything. I would feel 100% comfortable with this. I just really like how little these are. I think that this is just awesome. A lot of what I'm doing, again, is using it as a tool. And when I'm albie fishing, it is no different. I love to use this for albies. Not the fastest reel in the world, but I, I really love, this is my albie rod reel, 100%. If I'm doing spinning gear for uh, sea bass or tatog or anything like that, I love this. Any kind of bait fishing reel with, with where I'm not, I don't have to bring it in fast and I'm not working a lure, this reel is unbelievable. It's just like, I mean, and it's adorable. It's pocket sized. I do really like the VR series. I used to have a VR 175. I got rid of it to buy a boat, but uh, I loved it. I had no complaints with it whatsoever. Um, they are phenomenal reels. The VR series is just a lighter application. It's also much cheaper. So this I think is like in the $500, $500, $600 range for these reels. And these ones are in, you know, seven, nine, seven, nine hundred dollars So you're gonna get a cheaper reel, but by no means are you losing, you know, any of its oomph. This thing is still an absolute beast. I have both of them. This is just my absolute daily driver workhorse for anything on a big rod setup. My small rods, boat rods, uh, bottom fishing rods, Albi rods, Benito rods, go to. I really wanna land a yellowfin on this because Craig told me that they tested this on, I think he said they tested it on yellowfin down in Florida. Uh, and ever since then, it's like a dream of mine to catch a yellowfin or a big tuna, a bigger tuna on this reel. This thing has 20, I wanna say it's 22 or 25 pounds of drag on this reel. It's a beast. 25 pounds of drag, yeah, you're stopping just about anything. Um, for a VR 50. So, I mean, the thing is tiny. They're bulletproof. Great reels, can't recommend them enough. Um, also 100% sealed, also machined out of one piece of aluminum. The things are great. This is also a bailed series. I don't believe that the VR 50, I know he was talking about coming out with a bailless version, which I really was like, I actually called Craig and was like, hey man, what are you kind of coming out with the, the bailless version for this? And I believe that they, I think you can get aftermarket kits for it, but I would have loved to have seen this in a Bayless version. Um, again, I could have my facts totally wrong and they could have it, but um, this is the bailed version. So it is what it is. It's small. It's not the end of the world um, with this. I think that they're still 100% worth it. 
So one other thing that I should mention about the VS versus the VR is the drag noise. So the noise that the drag makes It's quieter. The number one reason why I think they did that is because when you hook up with a fish at night or during the day, if you hook up with a fish, you can't hear this thing sing as much as you can hear the VS sing. Um, I don't care about that. It is what it is. I personally absolutely live for the sound of the drag. That's just me. So I really love the sound. There's just no better drag, except for maybe your big reels, but there's probably no better sound. It's got such a unique, distinct drag noise that I just love it. I think it sounds amazing. The thing sings. This is much quieter. It hides that you're hooked up. Um, it's not nearly as loud. It's just, you know, this like light little click. This has got like a met metallic metal ring zing to it. This is just a little much lighter click. Really, really nice. Um, but it is just one other difference between the two. One last thing I want to talk about with Van Stahl is yes, they are 500 to almost a thousand dollar reels. They're very expensive. They're very nice. They're very recognizable. So for that reason, be careful, right? There have been numerous nightmare stories of these being stolen. These are sought after and they're very easy to recognize what they are. If you leave these outside of your car, guys will recognize them. And I have heard of people that have gotten their, their van stalls stolen. So if you are one to leave them on a roof rack or you leave them in a rod rack on the front or back of your car, right? Like do so at your own peril, but you know, it is what it is. I'm not saying that, you know, the fishing industry is a little bit more, you know, hardcore than other, like every industry is going to have thefts. I get that. All I'm saying is just be careful of it. Lock them away, uh, store them so that they're not out in the open, right? Be really, really careful with them because you know, Guys see them, they know what they are, they know they're valuable. So just be careful and store them properly uh, and keep an eye on it. The last thing that I'm going to talk about when it comes to the van stalls and why I think they are absolutely worth it is the service. I don't know of another reel that has the service, warranty, customer, service. I, I don't know of any other reel that has anything quite like this. Um, if you have any issue or if you just want to send it out and get it, you know, yearly service, some guys annually service them. If you want to get these things worked on, I think it's a $50 charge goes through the entire thing. You just have to send it out. Or in my case, I have saltwater edge, which is right down the road from us. So I just bring it in. Uh, they got me mine back in a week. Um, Send it out, get it serviced, boom, comes right back. They are phenomenal. If you have any issue whatsoever with them, they're serviced for life. Like you could bring them anywhere, you pay 50 bucks and boom, you get a brand new reel basically. They go through everything. Mine, like in my previous videos, if you might've seen, I was an idiot, I opened it up, don't do that. I highly recommend you bring it to the service or send it to service and have them do it. I opened mine up, might be another video coming on that, but they replaced the whole side plate for me. They went through everything. They grease it. They replaced the seals. Uh, they work on the drags. They replaced the side plate. They did everything for me. It was more than $50. Again, don't open them up. But my point is, is that the customer service on this is fantastic. So if you ever had any issue with them ever in your life, ship them out. You can know without a shred of a doubt when it comes back, it is 100% good to go. So that right there is worth every penny in my opinion. I'm not saying other reels, you can't do that. If you own a Van Stall and you ever have to service it, you'll know what I'm talking about. You don't have to worry about calling in or talking to somebody or what they'll cover or what they won't cover or will they have parts or 
You just send it out, you're gonna get a brand new one every single time. That right there is worth the money to me. So, Van Stahl, is it worth the money? 100% yes. Should you own one? Maybe. Depends on where you're at, what you're targeting, and you know how serious you wanna take this. I will always own a Van Stahl. I love the company, I love the product, I love the service, I love the warranty, I love everything about them. I will always use them, they're my daily driver. Do you need one? Maybe. If you guys decide to take the plunge this year and pick up a Van Stahl, I'm going to leave links in my description. I believe that they're either gonna be for Amazon or Bass Pro. I like Bass Pro because a lot of times they're in stock. Um, I will leave links down below. If you buy them through me, I do get a small commission on that, so it helps this channel grow. Um, but I will leave links down below. Pick yours up today. Uh, don't look back, that's all I would say. They are worth every penny and they are lifelong tools. You will have them forever. Guys, if you like this video, please smash the subscribe button if you're new. Hit the like button, comment, let me know how you like your van stall. Um, which one you're using, and uh, if you think it's worth it. Really helps the channel. I really appreciate every one of you guys that are sticking around and watching this stuff. If you guys have any uh, thing that you want me to cover, please don't hesitate to throw it down in the comments below. Thanks so much, we'll catch you guys on the next one.